Fargo Metro COVID-19 public health briefing. We've had many developments locally in the COVID-19 crisis throughout the past week. At this time, we'll hear an update from Director of Fargo Cass Public Health, Desi Fleming. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, Brenton Niesmeyer, our regional epidemiologist, could not be here today, so I'm just going to give a little bit of update on the numbers in North Dakota today. Yesterday, Cass County did have its single um, largest day for positive cases, so that was eight cases in one day. Um, we did have three more this morning, so that brings our total to CAS up to 34. In the state, um, they hadn't updated numbers as of this morning, but I think it, it's probably in the 130s now for um, total numbers. 23 of those have been hospitalized, and then we still have the three deaths in the state. Um, currently, our highest age category in the state of infection rate is the 30 to 39-year-olds, and then with the second category being the 20 to 29-year-olds. And of course, these younger populations sometimes have those milder symptoms as well, too, so we want to, they might be a little bit harder to identify, so we want to be aware of that. Um, and the highest exposure category in our state is now community spread. Um, as far as our contact tracing efforts, Brenton is kind of orchestrating our nursing staff for contact tracing. We have 20 nurses that are trained and ready to go. We kind of pull them in as the need arises, but we have kind of similar to like a call center set up at our office where all of those contact calls are made and that um, has been working really, really well for us. Um, so as far as my talking points today, I thought I need to go back a little bit to just some really basic public health messaging. So here we are in week three of this. Um, we know our cases are increasing. We know we have community spread. So again, for those of you who don't know, community spread is where we can't identify that um, infectious exposure. So can't link it to travel. We can't link it to a positive case. So we know it's just out in the community. So what this means is that we need to be even more uh, vigilant in our actions and use common sense in our every day-to-day -day activities. I know this event has challenged people because of the many unknowns. Uh, we don't have a lot of control over certain situations in this, but there are things that we do have control of, and that's what we need to focus our efforts on. The only way that we can slow this virus spread and to flatten that curve is if everybody steps up and does their part. So in healthcare, we're taught about um, universal precautions, so which basically means that we treat everybody as infectious even though we don't know their status. So if we can apply a little bit of that um, and, and put that in this situation, the reason that we're taught that is that so we're very calm and deliberate in our actions so that we are very aware of our surroundings and that we can apply those principles. You know, when, when we have too much fear and too much panic, we don't make good judgments. But we have to balance that with the fact that this is a pandemic event and that we need to start taking it seriously. So here is what public health needs everybody to do. So non-essential workers, stay home. That's one of the big messages. Social distancing, which is our new favorite term, is keeping six feet of physical space between you and someone else, whether you are inside or outside. Um, you can get out around your house, walk the dog, ride a bike. That, those things are allowable. Um, go for a drive. If you have a, a member of your family or your roommates that you've been with over the last several weeks, and you're still in that little group, the problem becomes when you keep adding people to that mix and you keep bringing in more people, then you're increasing your exposure risk. So avoid that. Avoid the gatherings, the large gatherings. Um, indoors or out. So this is not the time to be down at Island Park loading up the basketball courts and loading up the skate park. And that's not physical distancing. That's not what we need right now. Um, cleaning those surfaces regularly. Think about your phones, think about your steering wheels, think about your water bottles that you carry around with you. All of that is frequently touched surfaces. Only necessary outings. So, you know, there's lots of online stuff. There's lots of, um, if you have to order groceries, you can do it online. If you can't, send one person. Don't send five people. Don't take the kids. Don't, you know, 
be really smart about things, make a list, be very deliberate when you go there. It, this isn't the time to wander all the aisles and try to figure out what you're gonna have for the next five days. Make a list, get in, get out, wash your hands before and after, and then physically distance yourself when you're in that store. Essential workers, we know that there are a lot of us right now that have to be working. There's frontline people that are working, there's um, services that are supporting those frontline people, and I thank you to everyone who's putting in hours to do that. They need to follow those same kind of prevention strategies while they're in that work environment as well. Um, the other thing that's really important for people who may be working a lot of hours is that whole mental health piece. It's eating well, it's resting, it's hydrating, it's exercising. All those things are going to help us get through this. The other thing that's really, really important is for those people to be monitoring their physical status so that if they have any type of change, if they would have a fever, or any respiratory symptoms, that they are alert to that and know that so that they are then able to stay home and get that figured out before they would be back at work. Um, there is a tool on the North Dakota Department of Health website that is a COVID risk assessment. Um, that website is www.ndhealth.gov, and that will help people determine um, are their symptoms um, indicative of COVID-19 or what their risk is and what they should be doing. So that would be a really good tool to use. The other two things that I wanted to mention are the um, travel restrictions within um, North Dakota now. So last week, the state health officer put out a um, mandatory quarantine order for those coming back from either international travel or um, those kind of hot spots in the domestic travel area, and those are all listed on that on the North Dakota Department of Health website. So that is a mandatory order for 14 days they have to quarantine in their home, and there would be then consequences if they're not following that. So there's that. The other thing is travel recommendations. So anybody that was um, spring breaking, anybody that um, snowbirds coming back into the area, basically anyone coming from outside of North Dakota into our state, there is a recommendation that they also would quarantine for 14 days. There is no order tied to that, but that is a public health recommendation to keep them and everyone else safe. So those are the two things I wanted to mention. If anyone has any questions or are wondering about anything, please feel free to email us to reach out. Um, at We have a website set up specifically for questions, Fargo Cast Public Health PIO at FargoND.gov. We would much rather um, clarify your questions than have misinformation. Thanks. Thank you very much, Desi. And now we have Clay County Public Health, uh, Kathy McKay to talk. Thank you. So in Clay County, we are now at eight lab, lab confirmed COVID cases. So we had an additional two that we were notified about last night. These individuals are in the age category of 20 to 43, so um, a young group. The state of Minnesota has 629 positive cases, but they've tested over 19,000. So the 629 is about 3%. Um, of the cases that they have tested. Minnesota has 12 deaths, 112 individuals required hospitalization, 56 are currently in the hospital, and 26 are in intensive care units. So the median age for those confirmed cases in Minnesota is around 46. The median age for those that are hospitalized is about 63. So as Desi mentioned, we know the virus is spreading. We know that it, um, People can have symptoms even prior to having um, uh, the, uh, they, can, they can have the virus before they have the symptoms. And sometimes those symptoms are mild. So I re reiterate what Desi talked about is that six foot social distancing. That is very important to, to break that infectious cycle. The governor of Minnesota ordered the stay at home um, and that is effective through April 10th at this time. Um, leaving home, again, just for essential needs. So if it's health and safety things, supplies and services, if you're caring for others, you can still engage, as Desi mentioned, um, outdoor activities, but that six-foot distancing is very important when you think about your activities um, engaging with others. 
Clay County Public Health and Social Services, we are working again with our vulnerable populations, those in long-term care facilities, group homes, homeless shelters. We're providing information and resources for those individual families and service providers in regards to the pandemic planning and response. Um, the Minnesota Department of Health is doing the contact tracing, so they will work with the individuals that are positive, identify those close contacts, and then provide um, um, information to them to follow through. Our local public health agency will work with those that are isolated if they need assistance obtaining any supplies or resources when they are home so they can remain safe in their home. Um, we also know that we're still have a shortage of personal protective equipment, I think for healthcare workers and first responders. So check the websites, I think there's information out there in regards to who needs the personal protective equipment, N95 masks, surgical masks, gowns, um, safety goggles. And I know that um, even equipment that is past the expiration date can still be accepted and can be used in a variety of, of places for first responders. For daily updates about COVID, uh, you can look at the Minnesota Department of Health um, website. Um, and they are also teaming up with um, a website which is called COVID Near You. So it is, uh, was created by some epidemiologists, free for anyone to participate. It actually helps for public health to identify those hot spots, and it's across the nation. Um, and so it's a simple process. Um, any of the public can go there. You can report if you're healthy or if you have symptoms, and then public health is able to trace that a bit um, better and um, closer. So it's covidnearyou.org. Anyone can and sign up for that. The link to that and also the Minnesota Department of Health newsletter for more information will be on our Clay County Public Health Facebook page. Thank you. Thank you. From the Sanford Health System, we have Dr. Doug Griffith. How are you today? Thank you very much for bringing us together and uh, providing us a venue today. Um, at this time, in, a, in an update, we're not experiencing any capacity issues related to COVID. We have plenty of open beds as much of our other patient volumes have decreased and, and we're managing the situation. Uh, we currently, as of this morning, have uh, four inpatients positive for COVID. We've been fortunate to have a couple of uh, patients discharge uh, and recovering. We've unfortunately had eight employees that have now tested positive for COVID. Uh, they're all doing well and recovering, recovering at home. Uh, kind of uh, to the points regarding testing, we have seen uh, a, a significant increase in our testing. Uh, we averaged about uh, 37 tests per day at our drive-through uh, testing for the first week. Last week, that average went up to 50, and yesterday we did 90, uh, which is the most we've done in one day. Um, we continue to look for all of the services that have been impacted, look for creative ways to deliver those services. Uh, and one of our big success has been the transition to uh, video visits. Uh, and uh, on Monday, we did 1,000 visits, video visits alone. Just by comparison, all of last year, we did 100. So uh, it's been amazing to see our uh, staff uh, adapt to that and how quickly the public has adopted uh, the virtual visit as well. Uh, we have a solid surge plan in place for the care of uh, COVID patients. Uh, we feel good about our capacity now, uh, but the surge target number seems to be constantly evolving and moving depending on the models you look at. And we're uh, working very hard to stay one step ahead in our planning. Uh, our testing is going well using the internal test and actually we're looking and bringing uh, online uh, testing right within Fargo uh, by later this week uh, with the, to our focus will be able to test inpatients on a just a few hour turnaround uh, and then get them promptly placed where they need to be. Um, and the other thing I wanted to highlight today, a little bit later this afternoon, myself and Dr. Avish Nagpal, uh, our medical director of inf uh, infection prevention, will be hosting a uh, town hall or grand rounds type format for uh, the community access hospitals across the state. Several have been wanting information, hey, how do we manage these patients? What can we do? And to help dissem uh, disseminate uh, that information. So we're looking forward to that. 
Uh, we continue to encourage call before you go. Uh, so we're requiring patients to call before an appointment for coming to clinics. Uh, those people, we're trying to convert as many people as we can to, uh, to video visits, but if they do need to come in, we'd like them to call and so we can direct them as well. We now have no visitors allowed in our hospitals or clinic, except in some special circumstances. Such uh, examples would be like a, uh, if the patient is a child or needs some caregiver assistance uh, in birth and end of life uh, circumstances. Um, we're constantly updating the information, uh, so feel free to visit our website or our Sanford Health uh, news site for the, the latest uh, information. I want to close by saying how incredibly proud I've been of our staff. Uh, they're stepping up uh, daily to do what's right for our patients, and I can't thank them enough. They are certainly rising to this occasion. So. Thank you very much. And next we have Essential Health, uh, Dr. Rich Better, to talk about what they're doing as well. Great. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I just want to start by thanking the citizens of our community. You know, I think our community response has been outstanding as we deal with this COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, I think most people in our community are heeding the warnings about social distancing, the travel restrictions, staying at home if they're ill, uh, and self-quarantining uh, in spite of all the significant economic impact to them, uh, their businesses, and their employees. Uh, I made a comment to some of our leaders yesterday that we in healthcare often talk about how we're here for our communities and for our patients. Uh, what I've been really impressed with the last uh, several weeks is just the community support that we've gotten as healthcare providers being on the front lines. And just uh, really want to thank everyone in the community for their support of our healthcare workers. Uh, so I'll take this opportunity to highlight and review some of the things we've been doing at Essentia Health to prepare for this impending surge to our facilities. Early on, we adopted visitor screenings uh, to keep uh, safe our most vulnerable patients. Uh, we've increasingly um, made those uh, standards stricter as uh, uh, time has passed, and that's both in our inpatient areas and outpatient areas. Uh, we've offered free e-visit screening, and that continues on our website. Um, we've enhanced the educational content and added additional links as well for, for information. Uh, we've been working with state and local officials as well as the rest of the medical community uh, to get the word out about the necessity of the public health measures uh, that we need to do to reduce the impact of COVID-19. Uh, we stopped elective procedures and routine clinic visits uh, to help keep our patients safe and to preserve medical supplies uh, as well as inpatient available beds. Uh, we've also accelerated our plans uh, around our virtual visits and we actually saw uh, uh, throughout our organization yesterday uh, over 2,000 uh, visits uh, through the uh, virtual platform that we've set up. Uh, one of the benefits of that is that we've seen that our providers and our patients have actually liked that type of interaction um, I've heard response on both ends. They feel like they get more time with their, with their patient and more time with their provider. We also want to make sure that we raise the warning around making sure that we don't have any unintended consequences. We want to make sure that people that need health care still reach out for it when they need it. If they have an urgent um, issue, uh, we want them to, to call, uh, visit our uh, website, uh, or present to the emergency room if that's uh, what's necessary. Uh, we closely monitor our supplies, our people resources, and we've been upgrading our facilities. Uh, we've increased our capacity uh, to take care of uh, more acute patients as that uh, impending surge comes, and we also have contingency plans beyond that. Uh, we are also working to bring in-house testing. Uh, we have the uh, analyzers and the platform to do that. It's just waiting for the supplies from uh, uh, our supplier to be able to implement that, and we expect that within two weeks. Uh, we've also enhanced our wellness initiatives and resources for our staff, but also for our community. We realize that at, as this goes on, uh, that's going to become an increasingly uh, uh, health issue, and we want to make sure we're prepared for that. So are we ready? I would say at this point, I'm cautiously optimistic. I think the additional time that we've had uh, has really been helpful uh, to prepare uh, for that surge of patients that we think we're going to have. Uh, and we've really enhanced our capacity to care for those patients in the communities that we're privileged to serve. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Vetter. We need to mind residents of social distancing. Indoors and outdoors is all inclusive. Uh, social distancing is not the same as social isolation. We're especially asking the younger people to practice smart behaviors. 55% of positive COVID-19 tests in Cass County come in the same group of people 
and they're under the age of 40. Let's think about that for a second. 55% of our cases right now are under the age of 40, and we had expected this disease to be in older patients, but it's here now, and it's with our young people. The threat is here, and it is real, so I'm asking you all to take it seriously. We see in the parks, and we sometimes see in the playground areas, we're, we're bunching, we're crowding. We need to separate from each other. Continue to listen to our public health professionals. They are working for you. The message from these professionals are the same every day. Hand washing, social distancing, and avoid unnecessary travel outside the house. The City of Fargo continues to do exercising measures to lower the risk. City facilities will continue to be closed to the public till further notice in order to reduce unnecessary contact. More than 60% of our staff is working in the office or in the field respecting social distancing guidelines. About 38% of our staff members are working remotely from home. We are working every single day to provide excellent services to the Fargo community. Even with COVID-19, however, we are conducting other business. I urge all Fargo residents to participate in the 2020 census. Visit 2020census.gov in order to fill out the short survey today. The census is important for determining funding, for education, for health care, and for infrastructure. I did it at home the other night, took 15 minutes. You can do your census and nobody will have to come to your door. Again, social distancing. It's entirely online and can be done with a cell phone as well. Next, I'd like to introduce the West Fargo Commissioner President, Bernie Dardis. Thank you, Mayor Mahoney. Thank you for uh, hosting us today. West Fargo is continuing to the, uh, with an extension of all of our building uh, closures. Uh, we continue to have our uh, key administrative staff is working from home. All of the other essential services, uh, garbage, sewer, water, all of those types of police and fire, all of those are continuing to function uh, with the uh, social distancing, washing of hands, all of those types of things. So the city of West Fargo continues to operate uh, very efficiently and very effectively. Uh, myself, my fellow commissioners, our administrators are, are in constant com uh, uh, conversation and communication by phone. Uh, we are given updates. We continue to do a lot of, of uh, updates to the public with regard to what is happening in our community. Uh, effective yesterday, West Fargo has initiated all the protocols for the spring thaw and flooding. Uh, the gates to our city, if you will, we have floodgates and they have been initiated as of yesterday afternoon. Uh, so I've been doing uh, daily drives through all of the uh, areas that uh, have known to give us uh, uh, concern in the past, as, as well as public works and engineering. And we are very, very confident that we are in a position that this spring thaw uh, will be a non-event uh, unless the, uh, the, what Mother Nature throws at us tomorrow. So obviously we're monitoring that very closely. Uh, we are now experiencing, or will soon be experiencing, a great deal of water coming from Lake Ashtabula. Uh, they are releasing up, up to 4,000 cubic feet per second, and all of that water, all of that water will have to go through the Horace and Cheyenne diversion. We do ask the people that live south of 94 along the Cheyenne River to continue to be vigilant. Uh, there is still ice in the river, that should there be any ice jams or anything like that, that uh, they can uh, call uh, the city of West Fargo or email us and uh, we'll certainly get out there and we'll do the inspections. We have uh, uh, already sent out letters asking for the public that we have access to those, to those specific properties of which I'm one. And uh, so our engineers and our uh, public works people can do on-site inspections as to whether there's any concerns about the riverbanks and that type of thing. Um, one of the things that I want to uh, talk about, and Mrs. Fleming talked about it from uh, Cass Public Health, is the idea of if you're struggling with anxiety or if you're struggling with the depression, uh, because watching the national news can do that to the most healthy of minds. And I'm going to encourage you 
that you reach out to friends, you reach out to family, or you reach out to the healthcare professionals. First Link and Dial 211 are trained professionals that can uh, have a great conversation with you and certainly get you any support and help that you might need. Uh, this is a troubling time for all of us, and uh, we don't want to lose anybody uh, due to those type of conditions. Governor Burgum has talked about North Dakota tough, and he's talked about North Dakota smart. And those are great analogies of what he talks about us as Midwesterners, because when I say North Dakota, obviously I mean our Minnesota neighbors, our South Dakota neighbors. It's, it's the Midwest. But I'd like to put this in perspective for you. By social distancing, by washing your hands, by following all the in instructions that the great healthcare professionals that are all working together, which is phenomenal. The, the integration of all of their resources is awe-inspiring. But North Dakota and Minnesota and our region, let's do this. Let's do this not for yourself because we're of that maybe culture, and maybe generation. Let's do this to protect our children. Let's do this for to protect our friends. Let's do this to protect your grandchildren and my grandchildren. So I appeal to you, follow the advice of the CDC and all of the local professionals that we have in this great community that are working so hard together and my fellow elected officials. The time is now. This, this pandemic is in Fargo, North Dakota. It's in Moorhead, Minnesota. It's in Cass and Clay County. Without this, without your dedication and understanding of what this means, we can't change the bell curve. Thank you very much. Very good. And now we do get to hear from our Moorhead Mayor, Jonathan Judd. Uh, thank you, Mayor Mahoney. Uh, thank you for, to the uh, City of Fargo for hosting this again. Also, a special shout out to our uh, public health officials and also our medical entities and your staffs. Thank you very much uh, on behalf of myself and the uh, citizens of the uh, City of Moorhead. Uh, I have a few uh, status updates regarding City of Moorhead services. Uh, just to reiterate, uh, generally speaking, um, our uh, city uh, offices our, or sorry, systems remain operational. Um, our offices still are closed to the public. Uh, staff are telecommuting and uh, working alternate schedules to the best extent possible to make sure that our uh, systems are up and running, fully operational and functional uh, to provide uh, support to our residents. We do have some new sanitation protocols. Uh, my understanding is that the curbside collection of totes will continue on schedule However, excess garbage must be taken by the residents to the solid waste transfer station instead of being left on the curb for special pickups. Uh, the reason for this is to protect our sanitation workers and to ensure the continuity of service. Uh, also, I will give an update. I know the Coalition of Greater Minnesota Cities and the League of Minnesota Cities have been tweeting this, but for those who do not get those tweets, please only flush toilet paper in your toilets. Uh, this is a huge strain on our wastewater and infrastructure. So we really wanna make sure that we don't have any uh, big issues coming out of our water treatment plant due to flushing more than toilet paper. Uh, any and all up-to-date information is always available at cityofmoorhead.com forward slash COVID-19. And I'm gonna echo, and I, I appreciate the uh, the elected speaking on this, and I, and, and I think both mayors are right. I mean, uh, we've had a lot of usage in our, of our parks. I've been out and about myself trying to get my walking down, biking uh, with my uh, uh, kids. Love to see the people out and in great spirits. Keep that up. I've also been seeing on social media, there's a lot of people watching the scenic yet rising Red River. Uh, that, 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 that is great as well. Please use the parks and our walkways uh, to get some fresh air to, uh, to bike and walk. But I implore you, please, please keep the children and adults off of the playground equipment. 
Also, please stay out of the floodwaters uh, for your personal and family's uh, health, safety, and well-being. Uh, don't be afraid to be what I think we call a neighborhood parent. It doesn't mean you're a helicopter parent. It means be the neighborhood parent. If you see children that are doing things that they should not be doing, don't be afraid. They call them out and get them to act right. Uh, a lot of those neighborhood parents are the reasons why I am sitting here today uh, because they came and checked me when I shouldn't be doing things I shouldn't have been doing. But again, to Mayor uh, Bernie's point, we all want our kids to be sitting here eventually one day too in that same capacity. So if it means coming out and telling someone's child that you don't know to go home or to get off the equipment or to just maintain the social distancing rules, please do so. I mean, that's what makes us strong as, as a community, and sometimes you have to just step up and lead and take action to save the betterment of everyone. So please uh, continue to do that, as we want you all to be safe and healthy. Lastly, I'll echo uh, uh, Mayor Bernie's point also, or did it come from Mayor Mahoney? I'm not sure, regarding the census. A good census count is always important to our schools, our businesses, and our communities. In times like now where we have an emergency declaration is even more important. So as of yesterday, my understanding is that Moorhead has a response rate of 46.3%, which was above Minnesota's statewide average of 43.8%, but we can do better. So please uh, feel free to go online, take the 15 minutes, fill out your census surveys, and let's get it all correct and accurate. Other than that, again, thank you all for being here this morning, and I'll pass back over to you, Mayor Tim. Thank you. Cass County Commission Chair Chad Peterson. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor Judd and I grew up together, and those parents were the same ones that checked me, so thank you to them. <laughs> As the both of us wouldn't be here, Mayor. Amen. With that, Cass County is open for business. We are by, open for business by appointment, however. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who's done their business via Cass County online, by phone, and scheduled visits accordingly through CassCountyND.gov. Since March 20th, we've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people that have done that. And obviously the social distancing phrase that we're all getting tired of is purposeful in this case. It, it keeps you safe, it keeps our staff safe, and it makes sure we can keep our doors open as long as reasonably possible. Another thing, our public meetings have changed. With an executive order by Governor Burgum, we're now allowed to have meetings solely online or solely via telephone. And with that, uh, April 6th commission meeting and Cass County Zone Board, which is a new social services board, will be conducted and accessible via conference call. To the public, thank you for your understanding as we balance our access to our meetings. And I know this is a struggle for those of you that are concerned about transparency, those of you concerned about access. This will evolve. Right now, we don't have the ability to do what we're doing right now here in City Hall with video conferencing. We'll probably get there soon in Cass County. We understand the concern, but again, we have to keep people apart. If we have a meeting that happens to have 20 or 30 people show up, we, we simply won't have the ability to conduct the meeting safely. So with that, uh, that's how we're gonna conduct our meetings in the near future. The last and most important part, in my mind anyway, Governor Burkham also issued an executive order regarding the election in June. The primary will be conducted solely by mail-in ballot. Look for more instructions coming soon from our county finance director. Another big change, but again, it's necessary to ensure we maintain social distancing. The polling stations by nature have people, many of them seniors, and I'm sure those of you who have voted recently uh, understand most of them seniors and working close proximity to one another every day. To reinforce that, we've gone through what we can in terms of recruiting. These people aren't full-time position, they're all part-time folks. So the people that we tried to recruit in the past aren't showing up to do their job again. And again, these are older individuals that are afraid for their own safety. And I think that makes some sense to keep them safe, keep you safe, and we'll get through this. Not ideal, but again, it's a change and we'll get through it. To those of you, Mayor Dardis, you said you took a bit of my thunder, but I'm glad you did. Mayor Judd, I'm glad you did as well. To those of you that are concerned about everything going on, be it tumult regarding rent, regarding food, regarding electricity, I've talked about programs available through Cass County in the past, and those programs, again, are maintained, they're open, accessible, and we have staff there to support you. Please do not be afraid to call and ask for help. We're North Dakotans, as Mayor Darda said, Minnesotans were proud. Now is not the time for pride. 
Ask your neighbors for help if you need it. Ask your neighborhood parents to check your kids if they need it. It's okay. With that, again, thank you to everyone that's tolerating this situation, doing your best with what is less than ideal. If you have any questions, again, check our website, cascountynd.gov. We're available at uh, Cass County ND Gov on Twitter, uh, on Facebook. Follow us. Whatever changes you, that are going to come up, you're going to have them there by the day. Things are evolving and uh, will continue to get better. Thank you for your patience and tolerance. Thank you. And finally, we have Clay County Commissioner Vice Chair Jim Haney. Thank you, Mayor Mahoney. <clears throat> the Minnesota governor's stay at home order limits public interaction to help slow the spread of COVID 19 and save lives. Minnesota County and city law enforcement will not stop you for the sole purpose of inquiring if you are following this order. You also do not need paperwork to verify if you are an essential employee. Our Clay County employees are all deemed essential workers. Effective March 30th, we only provide necessary services while limiting all public access to Clay County buildings, law enforcement, and the courthouse. The 7th Judicial District Court continues to be open for matters authorized under administrative order. Public access is limited to those people and their attorneys, and they will appear remotely when feasible. The Motor Vehicle Department closed on March 27th. The Minnesota Legislature extended the time frame to renew driver's licenses, permits, or disability parking permits that expire during this emergency. The Household Hazardous Waste Facility is closed in Moorhead, and will not be accepting donations, so we are asking the public to not please not leave materials at the facility until further notice. We would like to take this opportunity to thank everyone for the steps you are taking to stay healthy and to keep others healthy. We understand the individual sacrifices that everyone is making for the greater good of our community. Thank you. Well, thank you. Well, thank you, panel, for coming in today. We very much appreciate it. I think all of us are putting the message out there. You're going to start to see the numbers climb a bit, and we're a bit concerned about that, yes, but you also can help to flatten that curve, and it's really going to be up to the public to do that. So we're all ready. We're ready for surge. We're ready for what might come forward to us, but we need the public's help at this point. So thank you, everybody, for participating today, and uh, stay healthy.